Last week, a ported alliance painted the Indo-Pacific waters with a new strategic color. U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, alongside representatives from Japan, Australia and the Philippines, breathed life into what's now buzzing as the squad. This burgeoning alliance, etched during a high-stakes meeting, casts a formidable shadow over the geopolitical chessboard. The squad is not just another coalition. It's a robust assembly with eyes firmly set on the sprawling influence of China, but it also aims to punish India. It is, however, a failure from the word go. Welcome to TFI Global, the antidote to mass delusion. Last week, US Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin convened a significant meeting with his counterparts from Japan, Australia and the Philippines signaling the formation of an emerging defense coalition in the Indo-Pacific, informally dubbed the Squad. This assembly underscores a strategic consolidation, as articulated by Austin, shaping a robust long-term security framework. This development follows closely on the heels of the inaugural joint patrols by these nations in the South China Sea, coupled with a landmark trilateral summit at the White House involving leaders from Japan, the Philippines and the United States. In the upcoming months, this quadrilateral grouping plans to intensify their collaborative efforts. This includes expanding joint military exercises, enhancing interoperability among their forces and bolstering maritime security and intelligence sharing initiatives. Such measures are principally aimed at addressing the challenges posed by China's increasing influence in the Western Pacific. Moreover, Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr.'s decisive alignment with Western powers and his assertive approach to the Philippines' maritime claims in the South China Sea are pivotal to the rapid formalization of this alliance. The squad, with its members being the US, Japan, Australia and the Philippines, exhibits a more unified strategic vision and internal ideological coherence compared to the Quad. This ideological coherence is facilitated by the consistent alignment of its members with the Western strategic interests, unlike India's complex relationship with Russia. India, a pivotal member of the Quad, maintains a close alliance with Russia, diverging from the Western consensus, especially evident in its response to the Ukraine crisis. India's refusal to endorse Western sanctions against Moscow and its abstention from condemning Russia's actions at the UN highlight a significant policy divergence within the Quad. The stance is further compounded by India's continued procurement of Russian military hardware and its substantial increase in Russian oil imports, which occur amidst vocal Indian criticism of Western quote-unquote hypocrisy and perceived neo-colonial attitudes. External Affairs Minister S. Jay Shankar of India has articulated a critique of Western dominance and double standards in global affairs, positioning India as a voice for the global south and a counter to traditional Western influence. His statements reflect India's broader strategy to enhance its stature as a major global power, engaging with multiple superpowers to maximize its strategic autonomy without explicitly aligning against India despite existing border tensions. This divergence in strategic orientations underscores the fundamental differences between the Quad and the Squad. While the Quad grapples with internal inconsistencies ideologically due to India's unique position, the Squad is rapidly institutionalizing an ideologically cohesive military and strategic alliance focused on the Indo-Pacific, clearly aimed at countering China's assertive regional posture. The effectiveness of any Indo-Pacific coalition aimed at countering China's regional influence critically hinges on India's participation. This assertion is underscored by several indisputable facts relating to India's unique capabilities and strategic position, which none of the other coalition members can match individually. Firstly, India's economic stature is unparalleled in the region. With a GDP of $4 trillion, it stands as the fastest growing major economy, considerably ahead of its regional peers in both scale and scope. Secondly, India's military capabilities are formidable. It boasts the world's second largest standing army, backed by significant naval and air forces capable of projecting power across the Indo-Pacific. Recent confrontations such as the standoffs at Doklam in 2017 and Galwan Valley in 2020 demonstrate India's readiness and capability to crush Chinese incursions. 
Thirdly, the impact of India's vast market is a critical leverage point. Following the border clashes with China, India's decision to ban TikTok and numerous other Chinese apps coupled with restrictions on Chinese goods notably affected the Chinese economy. These measures underscore the strategic influence wielded by India's market capable of delivering economic blows that resonate through China's commercial sectors. The United States, despite its attempts to maintain a leadership role within the region, faces challenges of diminishing influence and domestic constraints. This reality makes India's role even more pivotal. Without India, any anti-China alignment in the Indo-Pacific risks lacking the essential economic, military and strategic weight required to be effective, potentially leading to its premature obsolescence in the face of China's assertive expansion.